due to lack of effective treatment for HLB, we have already lost millions of trees in Florida and around the world. Welcome to Nano Matters, the podcast that explores examples of nanotechnology. I'm Lisa Friedersdorf, Director of the National Nanotechnology Coordination Office. Here with me today is Swadesh Santra, Professor in the Nanoscience Technology Center and Director of the Center for Materials Innovation for Sustainable Agriculture at the University of Central Florida. His lab uses nanotechnology to help fight diseases of citrus trees. So Swadesh, what are common diseases that currently affect citrus and what are the effects on the fruit? Among bacterial diseases, the most important are citrus canker and citrus greening, officially known as Huang Long Bing or HLB. Both canker and greening affect fruit and compromise yield and fruit quality. HLB affected trees produce lopsided, premature, bitter tasting fruit, citrus black spot, greasy spot, scab, and melanose are among the common fungal diseases which cause fruit blemishes and yield loss. All fungal diseases can be controlled using fungicides, including copper-based fungicides, bactericides. Copper is also used for controlling citrus canker. But what about HLB? Well, Florida growers now have access to the antibiotics, streptomycin and oxytetracycline, to use on HLB-affected trees. Although these antibiotics are potent, the challenge is the effective delivery of these bactericides. Growers are equipped with foliar spray and soil drench application methods. However, none of these methods directly allow the bactericide to reach the phloem tissue where the bacteria reside. It is important for us to know that unlike other bacterial and fungal diseases, HLB is a vascular disease and the bacteria is growing inside the tree in the phloem tissue. Due to lack of effective treatment for HLB, we have already lost millions of trees in Florida and around the world. HLB has devastated Florida's $9 billion industry and is adversely affecting the citrus industries in Texas and Arizona. It is worrisome that HLB may negatively impact the California citrus industry if we are not able to find an effective solution fairly soon. I didn't realize growers used antibiotics. Is there a concern that this use could contribute to the issue of antimicrobial resistance? That's a huge concern. I think uh, at this moment, we don't have a robust cure that growers can use. Because of the challenge that HLB is a vascular disease and lack of any suitable therapeutics, when antibiotics was offered, growers were excited because they thought this is something they have in their hand. So you talked about the variety of diseases that impact citrus trees. How have you used nanotechnology to help address these diseases? HLB is a vascular disease. An effective treatment must reach the citrus phloem tissue, interact with the bacteria, and eventually kill them. If you apply a bactericide by foliar spray method, most of it forms a film on the surface, while some may be able to go to the subsurface area, such as stomata. Then there are several cellular barriers that bactericide must cross to ultimately reach the phloem tissue. Traditional bactericides, including copper and antibiotics, are not effective as they are not quite systemic, meaning they won't reach the phloem in large enough quantities, even though they are potent. It is reported that nanoparticles, which are smaller than 10 nanometer, can easily cross the cellular barrier in plants and exhibit systemic activity irrespective of the application methods. Now, we have done research. Zincicide nanotechnology is an example where we have produced zinc oxide particles with average size of four nanometer. 
and we have produced these particles and successfully evaluated in the field for HLB and other citrus diseases, including canker, citrus melanose, and scab. We are also working on systemic nanodelivery systems for HLB. Another attractive property of small particles is that if you design them correctly, you can control their dissolution in the plant system. You do not want nanoparticle residue to build up in the plant tissue, including the fruit and other edible parts of the plant. Ideally, you would want to get the antimicrobial job done and let the particles dissolve into plant metabolites. Also, your nanoparticle treatment should not cause toxicity to plants as well as to animals and humans. This is how you will contribute to the healthy ecosystem in a sustainable way. How are you applying these nanoparticles to the trees? We apply bactericide formulations containing nanoparticles using foliar spray. In commercial settings, air blast sprayers are used. We also use the soil drench method to apply nanoformulation. Trunk injection is another method that researchers are exploring in Florida for injecting bactericide directly to the HLB affected citrus trees. So what is the status of being able to use this technology by citrus growers to fight the diseases that you mentioned? You know, in, in our research, we have developed a number of bactericides based on copper, zinc, magnesium, and their combination. We have also developed nano delivery system for antimicrobial quaternary ammonium compound. We call it fixed quart. Using nanotechnology, we attempted to minimize the amount of copper per application and also develop suitable copper alternatives. All these nanoproduct formulations have shown efficacy in the field comparable to the industry standards and sometimes better than industry standards. We have specifically designed and developed zincicide for HLB. Zincicide is based on protein sized zinc oxide nanoparticles and it is a potent antimicrobial. We have successfully tested the efficacy in lab, greenhouse, and field conditions against HLB, canker, melanose, and scab. Next step would be the EPA registration. So, Swadesh, I, I just want to thank you again for, for talking with us today. This has been a, a really great conversation. Do you have any closing thoughts that you would like to share with our listeners? Sure. This is more for my young chemists and material scientists. Please spend a great deal of time to think through the problem. Be open-minded and collaborative. You must reach out to experts in the field and major stakeholders, including growers before you design a tool. We don't have much time to satisfy our scientific curiosity to design and fabricate or develop a new tool for potential sustainable agriculture applications. What if it turns out to be attractive scientifically, but not much commercial potential? Then growers will never be able to use it. Industry stakeholders are valuable resources, and therefore, industry collaboration is important. In terms of safety, put yourself first and think hard if the new drug or tool you will be developing will cause more harm to the environment and human health in general than its benefits. If you are not sure about it, it is okay to consult with experts before you start working on it. A good tool is the one that will benefit the growers most while minimizing risks the ecosystem. So, no rush. Please take your time. We really need you to be at the forefront of sustainable agriculture in coming years, and you can do it.